What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Ghost of the Night, a Hauntings and Paranormal Podcast. I am Phil Sams. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to give this podcast a listen. Now, today's podcast, I want to kind of talk about a uh, direct message I got from one of my Twitter followers, and it was in response to a previous episode that I recently had completed and put out there. And the direct message was basically three words, and all it said was, I need advice. So naturally, I was intrigued, and of course, I responded and said, love to help, but you kind of got to give me a little bit of a clue of what the, what it is you need advice on. I was hoping it was paranormal. If it wasn't, I would have been screwed, because I'm not Dr. Phil. That's what this episode is going to be all about, and don't forget, we are going to go to two episodes a week. Next Tuesday, will there will be the first Tuesday episode. So just keep that in mind. So check back on Tuesday for another episode. But here's today's episode. Ghost in the Night with Phil Sams. A few episodes ago, I covered the Ouija board and I gave a little history, what I thought about the Ouija board. So naturally, I started to get some messages from people about the Ouija board and so on. So I wanted to kind of revisit that a little here today. But I think if you listened to that episode, you definitely understood my thoughts on the Ouija board and what I believe it is, how I'm not concerned about opening up a portal to hell when you use a Ouija board. I don't put a lot of stock in the Ouija board. And I don't think you should worry about using a Ouija board. So I got a direct message on Twitter from... A person, I'm not going to mention their name for the sake of their privacy because it was a personal message to me. It caused me to want to revisit the Ouija board and kind of get my point across or try to do it more clearly than I did through the episode, which I don't think I farted around with it. I'm pretty sure you listen to that episode, you know exactly what I think of the Ouija board. There's no room for interpretation. So I got this message and let me. I'm not going to read the exact message. I will read directly my response because I want to kind of explain why I worded things the way I did. But let me kind of give you an overview of what their issue was. This person, you know, sent me a message, said they needed some advice. And that was the entire message. I mean, so I didn't really know what I was getting into, essentially. So I messaged them back and said, I would love to help, but I need to know what your issue is before I can even think about giving you some advice. I was pretty sure it had something to do with paranormal, but you never know. Twitter can be crazy at times. So basically, this person had used their homemade Ouija board, and after using it, they felt that they maybe there was something around them since they used it. And this, you know, naturally this person was a skeptic beforehand, and they used the Ouija board, and apparently all hell started breaking loose. Objects began to disappear and then reappear somewhere else, you know, like a kind of a prankster spirit would move something, wallet, keys, whatever, and maybe the phone being moved. And their kids were kind of starting to see some activity as well. So naturally, the the person was concerned, which, you know, if you're not used to that kind of activity or you've never experienced it, you definitely should be concerned. There's a valid reason to be scared when you face something you've never had to encounter before or deal with before. That is a perfectly logical reaction to it. How do I want to address this? Now, I can address this in several ways, but I wanted to kind of handle it with kid gloves a little bit because I didn't want to insult them. I didn't want to degrade them in any way because I understand people do have a fear of the Ouija board, essentially. And the fear will play a big part in why I responded the way I responded. Here is my exact response, word for word. I'm just going to go ahead and read it that way, and then I'll kind of explain why I said some things that I said. Okay, I'm not a big believer in the Ouija board, so I'm assuming that there was no activity prior. If something has suddenly been stirred up, Now, then, there might be a few things you can do. One, get rid of the board and planchette separately. Ideally, you want to bury them in different locations. 
communicate to whatever you feel is there that you don't want them there. That is your home. And express to them that you are not afraid of them. If things persist, then you might want to have the home cleansed with sage or some kind of cleansing ceremony or ritual. If all that does not work, I would recommend having the house blessed. Then I finished off the response was, I personally feel our minds are very strong and if you project a strong mental and physical strength, it will leave. Stand up for yourselves. If something is there, they feed on fear. Don't give them what they want. I hope this helps. If you need more help, try and find somebody local to assist you. Okay. I know you're probably thinking, if you don't put much stock in Ouija board, why did you kind of go through all of that? And the conversation continued a little bit that I won't get into, but I responded that way because for two reasons. I didn't want to upset them and bash them for even remotely thinking that the Ouija board is something that can cause that much problems in their life. It You know, do I believe it can open up a portal? No. But I'm not going to sit there and say, you're an idiot for thinking that using that Ouija board has caused all this. So that is why I opened up with, I don't really put a lot of stock in Ouija boards. I wanted them to understand, first off, I hope they got that message that I don't think it's a Ouija board. This didn't come from the Ouija board. Later on in the conversation that we had, they, uh, I, I asked them, I didn't ask them, but I insinuated, odds are, this activity has sparked, they saw you use the Ouija board or they encounter, They knew you used the Ouija board, so they thought you would be more receptive to them reaching out and making their presence felt or known. It wasn't the Ouija board. That spirit probably had always been there, if it is a spirit. Now, we need to keep in mind that our brains are very powerful and they do play tricks on us. I've talked a lot in the past few weeks about confirmation bias. If you are looking for things, then naturally you're going to see, your brain is going to connect dots that shouldn't really be connected and give you some a picture of something that's not really what it truly is. It's you're going to connect those dots in the way of thinking it's paranormal or ghost when it's not. Now, I don't think this is the case because well, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. But the person in the initial message to me said they were a skeptic before all this. So naturally, they were closed off. They didn't put a lot of stock in the paranormal or ghost or them wanting to interact with us or trying to interact with us. Maybe why, once they used that Ouija board, whatever was there, said, okay, this person's, this person's cool. They're okay with... Uh, There being a spirit around. Let me kind of make my presence known. That's a possibility. Now, let's be completely and totally honest. I have no idea what's going on at this person's home. I don't know why objects are being moved moved around to different locations or why things are being thrown off the wall. I don't know. There's no way I could know, even if knew the person personally. I don't know. Is it a spirit? No, I don't know. Did they have an earthquake? Maybe. I don't know. Did they just forget that they put the phone on the, say, counter and they normally put it on the end table? I don't know. I don't have all the facts. But what I do know is the mind is powerful and what you believe or what you think is real to you is really real. It could be a spirit. It very well could be a spirit. I've had that kind of shit happen in my home. Where I've had, you know, my keys were put somewhere where they, I, I always come in. And I think I've shared this on past podcast, but when I come in, I always put my keys. I have a little, basically, bar. As soon as I walk in the door, there's a bar right there. I set my keys, wallet, everything right there every day. Done it that way for as long as I can remember. There's been times my keys have been moved to the end table or the kitchen table. I, why would I carry my keys from room to room? I always set my keys right there. There are pesky little spirits that can, you know, like to screw with us a little bit, make us think about things, like to see us suffer a little bit in the fun prankster kind of way. But I don't know what's happening at this location. So I was treading lightly with them. And that is why I suggested what I did, because my suggestions were kind of a full, covered the gamut of everything, you know, get rid of the Ouija board, get the house blessed and so on. 
when it could just be in their mind. And that's okay if they still do all that stuff and it is just in their mind. The placebo effect does work. If you think it's affecting you or thinks you it'll make things better and it is in your mind, your mind will then tell you things are okay and you won't be experiencing that stuff anymore. That's okay to kind of feed it a little bit and tell them what they want to hear to a certain extent. And But that is exactly why I worded it the way I did. I wanted them to know first and foremost, boom, I'm not a big believer in this Ouija board shit. But if you believe in it, here's what you can do. If you think your activity is caused because one one night you had a few cocktails and started dicking around with a Ouija board and all of a sudden some demon is jacking with your phone. Okay, great. Here's what you can do, first and foremost. Do all this. I don't buy it, but do all this stuff. Hopefully it will take care of everything. And I kind of conclude the conversation with to really get my point across that, hey, a spirit demon, I don't care what you call it or what is there. I am a firm believer in this, and this is how I handle situations. This is why, how I handle when I go to investigations. I'm fully aware that there is a chance that I could bring something back with me, get something, that, something attached to me. I'm okay with that because I'm a 100% believer that we are strong in, I, how can I phrase this? I look at it like a spirit or a demon is a bully. And there's only one, I don't care what society says today. And yes, bullying is bad. I understand that. And you shouldn't have to deal with it. And it's a sad comment on society today when I even have to make this little PSA announcement because I'm even discussing bullying or mention bullying because we have to handle bullying a certain way. I don't care what anybody says. There's multiple ways to handle a bully, but the quickest and best, most effective way is to, you have to stand up for yourself. And that's true in life. If you stand up, if something is picking on you in real life or in the spirit world, essentially, what like what we're talking about here, stand up for yourself. Bullies or spirits or demons, honestly, I believe are looking for the path of least resistance. They feed on fear. You give them that fear, it's going to make them stronger. I don't even say, I wouldn't say make them stronger, but it's going to give them the want to fuck with your ass a little bit more. But if you stand up for yourself and say, hey, you want some, come get some. You are not going to do this kind of shit to me. I'm too way too strong for you to screw with my life. Then they're just going to say, okay, this isn't going to be easy. I'm going to move on to somebody that's a little bit easier to dick with. I'm a 100% believer in that. Now, there's probably people out there listening to this, or I know people don't agree with this. They think you should be so careful and walk like you're walking on ice when you're dealing with the paranormal. Screw that. You want some of me, you come get it. You're going to be in for the fight of your life if you want to attach yourself to me. I live that. I, that is the mental process or how I mentally prepare myself to go on investigations. I don't care if something wants If something wants to attach itself to me or do something like that, bring it. And I have that mentally strong attitude where you're not going to have it. You're not going to do anything to me. Now, I could be completely wrong. And I'm setting my, I've just been lucky to this point. And I'm setting myself up to be possessed and have my head spin around on my shoulders and levitate above the bed and start projectile vomiting. Maybe. It hasn't happened yet. I live with what I preach, basically, right there. And I'm, I also, you know, believe I wouldn't tell somebody to do something I wouldn't do myself. I don't have a problem with telling somebody. I think spirits that are showing aggression or screwing you with anyway, they're just wanting attention, like a bully. They just want to see what, they just want to push you. So that's what I do, and I practice what I preach. Now, like I said, if you disagree with me, fine. And if you think you should, you know, do all this special stuff to protect yourself, I I am a 100% believer. You do whatever makes you feel safe, what makes you happy. If you think carrying all these stones around, now, I have all that stuff. I've had people give me this stuff. You need this for protection. And occasionally I'll go on, go on investigation. I'll take them. But I don't put a lot of stock in it. Using salt around the locate, you know, around your home or whatever, or around, like, good old Zach Baggins in the Divix box where they got salt around it. I'm sorry, I don't buy that bullshit. A, I don't buy the bullshit of the Divix box, but I don't buy the bullshit about the salt. 
Because here's the thing. If these demons are so powerful, whatever, those are myths. Those are legends that things like salt work. I don't buy it. And that's my mentality when it comes to the paranormal. Now, I would not tell, recommend this, like this person that sent me this message. I'm not going to say, you know what, just screw it. Stand up for yourself. Tell that, tell it whatever you think is there. Tell it to pound down and get the hell out and go bother somebody else. Because that might not be their personality. And they might not be able to do it and truly mean it. If you're faking your strength or just for trying to project yourself being something you're not, they're going to see it. And that's just going to make it even worse if it is a spirit. So I would never just tell somebody to do that. I would say, do this, A, B, C, and D. If that doesn't work, okay, we'll revisit and form another plan. Because it's okay to do something. It's okay for me to recommend something that I don't truly buy. I've never once had my home blessed. I have activity here. I've never burned sage in my home. I've been on quite a few freaking lo- investigations. I've ha- I had activity, like I said, since I was a kid. And I didn't go on paranormal investigations back then. I'm pretty sure me actually going out and trying to interact with them at other locations. You know, if, if the whole attachment thing is truly 100% fact, I should have been attached, had something attached to me long ago. But I don't know. Maybe they just don't like me. But, or maybe they just realize, I can't screw with this guy, so let me move on to Joe Blow. See if it'll be a little bit easier. So that's just kind of how I think about it, how I approach the situations, and what I think about the whole Ouija board thing. Again, let me reiterate, Ouija boards are a crock of shit. I don't put any stock into the Ouija board. If you disagree with me, fine. If you've had experiences, fine. Maybe it's just a coincidence. But I'm not going to sit there and tell a person, oh, you're an idiot for thinking of the Ouija board. Absolutely not, because I don't think this person's an idiot. I firmly believe that they had a problem that they felt was because of a Ouija board. So, do A, B, and C, and D. Do that, don't work. We'll come back and think it again. But, I wanted to get my point across, you need to be strong. You need to be steadfast on projecting strength and don't let that bully of a demon or a spirit or whatever push you around. Be strong. Stand up for yourself. Bottom line, that is what I wanted to, the point I wanted to get across. They might really believe now that that Ouija board. So, hey, let's go ahead and get rid of it in the proper manner. Don't burn it. You know, bury it separately. If you don't bury it, you know, make sure the planchette and board never come together. Now, do I personally believe this shit? No. But hey, this is what the experts think. So, well, give that a shot. Cleanse the house. Burn sage. If that doesn't work, things still proceed to get worse or whatever, or whatever it is still sticks around. Go ahead and have it blessed. Now, I'm not going to say I don't believe in having a home blessed. Yes, I have faith in God. I believe, you know, evil entities do not like when you use or bring up God. I believe that. But I just don't think it has anything to do with the Ouija board. Odds are something was there before. They just, they just never noticed it before. Our lives are busy. We don't pick up on everything. Our brain can only take in so much information. So it prioritizes what is relevant and what's not. You use the Ouija board, maybe your brain said, okay, this object A being moved to object B with nobody doing it is a little bit more important now. And you realized it. You know, I, that's what I did. And that's what I recommended to them. And I told them, hey, let me know how it goes. Those steps don't seem to help your situation. Go ahead and find somebody locally to come in, maybe investigate, maybe do a blessing, maybe try to really dig deep and find out what is going on, what kind of entity or spirit they have or whatever. I don't know. I believe this person was not in the United States. and I'd have to look, but I'm pretty sure. So that is what I told this wonderful person. And, you know, if they're listening, thank you so much for reaching out. I hope it helped. Best of luck. If it doesn't, send me another DM. Let me know. And I hope you, under if you are listening, I hope you understand my point here. Yeah, no, I don't believe in a Ouija board, but I wanted to be respectful for the fact that you are having an issue that is real to you. And I wanted to be sympathetic to that. But I honestly think it was probably there before. Let's work on your mental state and be strong and don't worry about it. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you want, give me your comments on at ghostinthenightpodcast.com. Leave a comment at the show notes page of this podcast, of this episode. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at night underscore ghost, or you can go to our Facebook page at Ghost in the Night. Reach out there. Let me know what you think of the podcast. Go ahead and give us a subscribe on however you listen to this podcast. And also, we do have uh, posts every episode on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave us a comment. Give us a like there as well. But reach out. Let me know what you think about Ouija boards or my philosophy on just stand up for yourself. You think I'm an idiot? Let me know. Always looking for a response. We can have a little discussion about why you think I'm an idiot for standing up for myself, even in the face of spirits or evil demons. Of course, that's going to be a one-sided comic or one-sided fight because guess what? I believe I'm right. No matter what, whether you believe I'm right or wrong, you should always stand up for yourself in every situation. So it's a weak argument. Don't make it, but if you want to, go ahead and send me a message. What do I have going on? Um, I am definitely going to start doing two episodes a week. This episode is out on Thursday. We are going to add a Tuesday podcast. That is going to be basically a kind of review of maybe some headlines that happened in the previous week. Tuesday is just going to be a kind of a summary and catch-all and hot topic type episode. But that is probably, matter of fact, I think next Tuesday will be first Tuesday episode. Um, I'm not going to name anything special because, frankly, I'm lazy and don't want to go to all that trouble. So, but once again, thank you for listening to this podcast. Be sure to uh, connect with me. Let me know. Give us a follow. And I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you, I guess, next Tuesday. Take care, everybody. <laughs>